Hi and welcome to a new video. In this video I wanted to go through the overview and process that I completed so I could use a third party uh, router or router however you say it. Um, so basically I wanted to use my Asus GTAX 11000 and my other third party uh, routers that I had um, to connect to the Vodafone Wi-Fi hub. So this process will also show you if um, you do have a, a home phone as well. So like me, I have my um, home phone line um, via uh, Vodafone. So you will still need to use the uh, Vodafone Wi-Fi hub, but also connect your, um, your router to the actual Vodafone hub as well. If you don't have a home phone, then it's much more straightforward and you can just unplug the Vodafone Wi-Fi hub and replace it with your uh, third party uh, router. So it makes things much easier. But if you do like me have a home phone, then we'll go through that process as well. And it does make it a little bit more complicated, but we'll go through that later. Okay, so the first things you'll need to actually do to actually use your third party, like your Asus or your TP-Link, um, whatever brand you've decided to go with Netgear, is first of all, you'll need to use, um, you'll need to receive the login details. So that's your username and password from Vodafone. These aren't given to you by default uh, because they don't want you really using a, um, a different brand or anything like that. They just want you to use their hub from Vodafone. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to go to the Vodafone website, um, go to the help and support. And then if you just scroll down to categories and if you go to broadband, so click on broadband, then go to setup and getting started. So click on that one. Now you just wanna look for, can I use my own uh, router with the Vodafone broadband? So you click on this one. And you will have a little note here saying that, you know, if you do have any digital voice, um, but also they're just saying to you as well, if you do use a non-Vodafone um, brand, uh, with their service and you experience any speed or liability issues um, then they will ask you to reconnect the uh, Vodafone router uh, back to the phone line or the back to your fiber uh, box that's on the wall uh, it's called an ONT box um, the little uh, brown or white box that you'll have there so what you'll need to do is go to chat to us online um, you'll need to go to a, a customer service person uh, on their online chat and just say to them, you want to use your third party uh, brand uh, with them and you want to replace your um, Vodafone um, hub with them. They will then give you some details. So again, the details should look like this. Um, so your username, it'll be something with DSL and then some code and then it'll be at broadband.vodafone.co.uk. So it's best to you always perhaps not phone them up, but also just do it on, online because uh, with the password and everything else, you can literally just copy and paste uh, the information from the online chat so you won't have any spelling mistakes or any issues around there when you're inputting them into the uh, settings of the third party brand uh, router. So once you've copied those down from them, as I said, this is what the password uh, will look like. And then also the username will be in this kind of format where it ends in at broadband.vodafone.co.uk. So you've got those details. So this is what you'll need to actually input into um, the third party uh, router. So once you've got that, um, you will need to then, uh, of course, uh, end your online chat. Um, so you can then, if you don't have a home phone uh, line, um, then you can just literally unplug your uh, Vodafone hub, uh, whichever brand you version you have, you if you your gigabit fiber or the, just the normal internet one, you can unplug that and then plug in whichever brand you want into and input those details in normally under the, it will be the WAN or internet section. Um, of your settings within the uh, router. So once you've gone, done that, you can just input these details. Um, one thing you'll need to note as well, it does vary from um, brand to brand. So you will need to look this up. You will also need to input, um, because of the way Vodafone works, is that you will need to set up a VLAN. So again, this is different for each brand. 
So you have a, um, the VLAN, you'll need to put 101 in that field text box in your settings for the uh, router configuration. Um, that's if you're on standard internet. If you're on Gigafast, then that will be 911 you in input um, into there. So even if one doesn't work, then try the other if you're having issues. The other settings normally you can leave as default, but just make sure that you put it as a PPPOE and then it will ask you for your username and password, you input that there. So within the Asus router, I'll give you an example of that quickly so we can just have a look. So in this instance, I'm using the uh, Asus um, router or router. Um, so basically the first option, as we said before, when we're looking at the settings, we need to make sure we input our VLAN. So this particular on the Asus, we'll need to input this under, you'll need to go to your uh, browser and then type in the default IP address. So normally for Asus, it's 192.168.50.1 and then you'll log into uh, your actual dashboard here and then you'll go to advanced settings, LAN, and then you wanna go to IPTV tab. Um, so where it says profiles and everything else, you just want to go click here and then go to from the drop down you want to select manual settings so you want to leave the LAN port 1 and 2 empty so as we said here we want the VID um, we want to enter the number here so as we said whichever corresponding if you're on gigafast it will be 911 or it will be 101 if you're on normal internet again you can just uh, if one doesn't work then try the other but normally these gigafast is 911 and the normal one is at 101. So again, you just put the, so I'm on gigafast, so then I'll just put 911 inside there. I leave that as a zero, and then all the rest is uh, leave them alone and leave all these settings as well, and then hit the apply button. So once you hit the apply button, you may disconnect from the, uh, if it's not already probably connected to the internet, so you're not too worried about it. So once it's restarted or you've, it's gone back to this screen, so you'll end up going now, we need to go to the WAN uh, menu. So now we've uh, done the, uh, applied the settings for the VLAN under LAN uh, and IPTV. Now we need to go to the WAN or yours might be called internet. And then we need to then go to internet connection so this is where you, you type in your, and you select your uh, WAN or your internet connection type. So right now I've got mine set to automatic, and, we, and as we said in our settings, we need to put that to uh, PPP -O over OE. Uh, so I just need to go here, select that option, and then it will give you some more options normally. So then you just scroll down, and then you'll see here your username and password. So again, this is where we said our, our password so again in this example we'll just use this one here this is where copy and paste comes in handy so I was saying about online chat you don't have any issues then of perhaps writing it down wrong with the capitals and the uh, smaller letters and numbers um, especially with zeros and uh, O's and everything else so you might not remember so you can paste them in just remember when you do copy and paste in sometimes you'll have Either like here, you'll have a space as you can see here. So just make sure when you're copy and pasting, because that will cause you an error, that you just delete out and then make sure when you're highlighting, it is just highlighting those characters uh, within your password and in your username. So you've got no spaces or anything like that. It, that's just sometimes it catches people out and they've typed it in right or pasted it in, I think, but there's a space there. So as we said, we've just uh, basically, we've copied our and pasted our username and password in there. The All the other settings, we don't have to do anything. So again, and all we have to do is just go down to the bottom, hit apply, and then hopefully after you've actually entered your details for your username and password and set up the correct VLAN, you will then see your internet is connected um, and you should be able to use now your uh, third party router or router. Um, and basically then you'll have internet. Again, as I said before, uh, Vodafone, if you do have any issues with your internet or anything like that, they don't support the third party uh, brands. So you would, uh, if they do ask you to do speed tests or anything like that, um, then they, were, they may ask you to insert your, or reconnect your uh, Vodafone hub back to the internet connection. 
Okay, so that's the end of this section here where if you don't have a home phone line, it was easy as just swapping out the uh, routers um, over and then just input, inputting your VLAN details, your username and password as shown here, and then it should connect. So now we'll go on to the next section where if you do have a home phone, like in my instance, where you, you will still have to have the Vodafone hub and the third party. And this section gets a bit more complicated, but we'll go through the process and steps. Um, and this is called a uh, double NAT. Okay, so moving on now, as we said, this next section is only if you relevant if you've got a home phone uh, connection going via your fiber or going via your um, Vodafone uh, Wi-Fi hub. So because of this, you're going to still need to connect because the most third party routers don't actually use or have a filter built inside for telephones. You're going to still need to use the Vodafone hub and then plug your Wi-Fi uh, router into that. So what we're going to do first is that we're going to have to change some settings uh, to make sure that everything doesn't is compatible and works together. So first of all, these are the settings that I completed. So as you can see here, I've only got my one device connected to the network, and that's my uh, Asus uh, router. And then I've got my one USB, and of course that's just the um, the 4G dongle that you get uh, as part of the package. So if my internet goes out, it will use the 4G signal. And then again, I've got my telephone, as you can see here, uh, connected. So that means I've just got a normal telephone connected to the back of the hub in the relevant port as uh, as they've instructed. So if, as we can see here, while well, I've got all of these as well as no devices connected because I switched off the Wi-Fi because I'll be using the Wi-Fi, the firewall, and all basically all the uh, router settings, I'm going to be putting it through my Asus. Um, or you can use your Netgear or your TP-Link, whichever one you decide. Um, but in this example, I'll be using Asus. Um, so just to give you an example, and then uh, on if you do have this, you can see what options as well. So again, as I said, I just go to on Internet. And as you can see here, I've got the firewall switched off. Um, and also allow ping to uh, WAN interface that's disabled as well again I would not recommend if you're not um, you know if you're not having a third party um, uh, brand uh, router uh, plugged into this don't be switching off your firewall because uh, this is what protects you but because we have the firewall connection and everything else switched on on the main Asus router uh, we don't need this it would just interfere with having two lots of firewalls so first of all we need to make sure these are both switched off then also um, we need to enable the uh, static uh, DMZ or exposed host again I don't advise ever doing this if you don't you're not doing this particular process um, because this opens up whichever device you're connecting to the internet um, you know with open all ports and everything else so again it says here uh, it just gives you a warning but because we as I said we're using all the uh, router functions and security of the Asus um, we've got no problem um, so basically what I've done here is actually switch this on and then I've typed in the IP address of the actual uh, router so this is my um, static IP address I've set up for the Asus router so uh, as you can see here I've put that in there and then clicked apply so that means that everything from the internet doesn't get filtered through the actual uh, Vodafone Wi-Fi hub it just goes from the internet straight to the Asus um, and that's what I want so I can then control everything using the Asus router again all these other options you don't really need to change the only one I did change here is um, setting this to manual and uh, setting it to Cloudflare because um, I find this DNS server a bit faster. But again, it's your preference. You can leave it an automatic and just use Vodafone's default one. Uh, you don't have to. This is just an optional um, feature if you want to. And once you've done that, you just click apply. So we've just done those two. Um, basically, the static uh, DMZ and then switching off the firewall and everything here. Next, because I'll be using the Wi-Fi, as I said, on you know, and that's the whole point um, of using a third-party uh, router. So I just go to Wi-Fi next, and now I've switched off the Wi-Fi for the uh, Vodafone Wi-Fi hub. Um, I don't want that on because I don't want two lots of Wi-Fi networks clashing with each other and everything else. 
Um, that's the whole point. Um, you just cause more interference and slow down um, on the, whichever router you're plugging in. So I've selected uh, and switched that off. I have a, a la left enabled the Wi-Fi button, so if I ever do want to switch it on, I can just uh, don't have to go into settings. I can just switch it on using the button on the side for any uh, any reason. Again, so I've just after you've done that, I just click apply. And then on these other options here, you don't have to do anything um, with all of these because we've switched off the Wi-Fi now, so you won't have a Wi-Fi signal. Again, just be wary as we're setting this up. It's best to be because you're you're connecting. You're actually disconnecting the Wi-Fi. If you are connected to the Wi-Fi using um, your device to the Vodafone hub and not using Ethernet, then of course you're going to have, um, you know, it will disconnect you and you won't be able to update any pre more settings. So if you are connected by Wi-Fi and you do not even have the option of Ethernet, then leave this to the last option after you've connected the third-party router and come back into your uh, Vodafone hub settings and switch this off last. It's only um, just be wary of that, um, you know, just in case. So again, if you are connected by Wi-Fi to this and you've got you're not got no option to connect by Ethernet, then leave this option to switch off the Wi-Fi to as the last option in coming after you've connected the uh, router and everything else. Again, you've got all these other options here for sharing and settings. We don't need to really change any of these on here. Um, you may want to have a look at your local network. And this is where perhaps you want to set up a different um, address. So as in the uh, My Vodafone Wi-Fi Hub, it did have the same IP address I wanted to, any particular IP you wanted for your network. So I set this one to a standard 192.168 and just called this one 52.1 and then also I changed it down here in the local so it will give out an IP address of 52 so this is what the uh, your third party router will connect and as you can see my one will default connect at I've set this static here I've set it to 130 so this address will be all the same and as you noted this address 130 I've left here is the same as we done for the uh, DMZ. So as you can see here, we've got 192. So that's just going straight to the router. So it opens it up and everything else. Make sure those settings are correct because if your router does restart or your Vodafone one does start your hub, this, not, this IP address will keep changing. So it is a good idea to actually go to settings, local network, and then just uh, once you've set your local network up, and your IP address here for the hub. If you need to change it, so be it. Um, then just make sure you set a static address for that router um, on here so you know. You will need to know the MAC address of it and normally it's on the label on the bottom or it's within your settings on your router. So you can get those from there. Um, and also it should be on connected devices when you go into your Vodafone hub. You'll be able to see on the overview tab, you'll be able to see here under here your um, your MAC address here. Okay, so that's the only settings that we need to change here. And again, these ones are gonna be under expert mode. So if you're in basic, you need to swap over to expert. And then once you finish there, you can log out. So that's the uh, settings that we've uh, updated. Um, that's all needed for the Vodafone. So I already have the um, Asus um, router already um, connected to the back uh, ethernet port of my um, Vodafone hub. So now what I need to go into is configure my Asus wireless router. So as you can see here I've gone into the settings and then you can go into WAN. So under R1 is WAN or it might be under your certain uh, router, it might be internet. And then once you go into that option, you'll need to make sure you select under the con uh, connection type for your internet is automatic IP. Because that's what basically, it'll be pulling that IP address of what we've said in the Vodafone hub. So it will be picking up an IP address from there um, just to configure it. So that was the one that was, we said it was ending in 130. So it would always have that IP address connecting. Then configure any other settings that you want uh, to enable. I've got some optional ones I've selected here. And again, once you've done that, then all you have to do is just go to apply. 
Uh, in this option, because we're using the Vodafone uh, router, we on under automatic IP, as I noted before, we don't need to input any of your username or password or any VLAN because all of this has been handled by the Vodafone hub itself. So we don't need to input any of that. So we just need to make sure that we've got automatic IP selected and then it should pick up and then you should be able to see then um, on here if I just uh, scroll uh, to a network map and you'll be able to see here that where it's either picking up an IP address of the ending in 52 and they've got that and it's connected to internet and then you'll, you'll have a list of your uh, devices and everything else that are connected so you will have everything there that you need uh, for the option and everything and then that should be it so what once you've connected and everything else your uh, router should be connect straight away again if you do have any issues um, like on on the Asus you just go to administrate I've left mine as the wireless uh, router mode you don't need to switch it to any of these others because I want to enable all the other features of this so I'm using the uh, Wi-Fi on here I'm using the AI protection as I said with the firewall parental controls the quality of service um, the guest network so everything is all connecting through my uh, Asus router here so it makes things much easier for me so you can just leave that there again the only option really we need to change in this is to automatic and making sure that our firewall is enabled and I've also enabled AI protection um, because don't forget we switched them off on the Vodafone hub hopefully that's been, been a bit of a long process but hopefully I've got into enough detail so it's answered most of your questions again uh, as we said these settings are only needed um, if you are using the PPOE um, if you are using it for the second option like we've just gone through you don't need these options here so you don't need to worry about any of this information and just need to be selecting wireless router mode and then also uh, on your WAN uh, you just need to be making sure it's got automatic IP and then you shouldn't have any issues you should be able to connect all your devices to your Asus or whatever brand uh, third-party router you have connected and it should, everything should connect Thirdly, if you want to have a look at one option is that sometimes with port forwarding people have an issue with. So if you're opening up ports on here, so we can just go into that quickly now um, and then we'll uh, end the uh, video. So just quickly going through any port forwarding that you have. So here you can see here I've got two devices here that I'm port forwarding out to the internet so I can uh, dial back uh, to my, these devices from the internet and outside my home network. Um, using the internet so you should because we've set this uh, uh, router up as a um, DMZ on the Vodafone all of this should work perfectly well and there shouldn't be any issues um, if you do have any issues it might be worth a uh, first point is to troubleshoot just to make sure you've got all of these d details correct uh, secondly is if you do have any issues um, is you go back into your Vodafone uh, uh, router and then if you go into the, uh, let's have a quick look, can I just show you, oh, there we go. Um, if you go into the internet tab and then IP version four port forwarding, and then just add that port forwarding uh, to the actual um, router. So basically, if you have a look at this example, uh, we can have a look if I just scroll uh, up. So as you can see here, I've got a port I want for 443. Um, and then the external is uh, 24530 um, so basically on here so I, what I want to do is that's the external and that's the internal so I want to forward the internet to this one so you want to just replicate what's on that and put them here and make sure though the, the difference is on when you set this up and you can call it the service but the local IP address will be the uh, router that you've set up so it will be your router's IP address. So it will either be, you can find that on your dashboard on your router where it's picked up from the Vodafone app or it should be displayed in your overview tab as well. So this isn't the uh, individual device on the network. This is the actual router IP address you want to be putting in here. And then you put the port and then you can just put in whichever port you want to, uh, to open up. 
that's if you are having any issues you shouldn't do because we've set this up as as i said under dmz so that means that you know basically everything is going through straight there without any port forward doing anything like that okay so that's us going through uh I think hopefully covered off most scenarios and everything else with connecting to Vodafone with a third party router. Um, if you do have any issues or anything like that, or any questions, then uh, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I think we've gone through most of the scenarios and I will bookmark this. So as usual, I know uh, my videos sometimes go on for a bit, but hopefully it's given you the details um, you know, and uh, it's covered off anything that issues that I had when first setting this up and uh, doing it so hopefully you won't have to go through all the pain okay thanks for watching and have a great day